Hello and welcome to The Good, The Scars and The Rugby, brought to you by Vodafone. We are back in our familiar studio space uh, after a beautiful, sunny, long Easter weekend. Scars is allowed back in the space where we are recording since we're not in the Vale. It's good to see her in real life. And since we had that momentous occasion at the start of the Women's Six Nations with England and Scotland in action in Newcastle, we just wanted to stay within the good vibes. Uh, we loved seeing it, basically the North fully come out for that spectacle. And uh, we want to talk about Scotland some more. So we figured she's not playing at the moment. She's got about five other jobs, but she uh, seems to be free enough to stop by our little humble abode. And uh, she's one of the unwavering strengths in that Scotland lineup whenever she's there. Sarah Bonner is in the house, former GB rower, former teacher, also an RAF, I want to get this right, flying officer in the RAF police, but you're on the elite athlete scheme, so that just means you, for now, you're not flying anywhere, right? No. She just no, play. she says. Sorry. Sorry, I just play, just play rugby, really, at the minute. <laughs> While doing all of that, she's also managed to, in between the four different careers I've just mentioned, uh, earn 34 caps for her country. And she has a podcast that has been going longer than this one. And if you watched any of the Women's Six Nations so far, you would have also seen her on your TV. She was with Mo and then she was with Gwen Crabb. Yep, just, you know, doing all of the punditry duties. Um, and we had a phenomenal story from Nick Heath when he was on the show about you playing through your injury that you are now rehabbing. Mm. So we're going to have to start on a relatively painful note. But if you are like Skaz, then you like talking about your injury because she whips out the proof of her ankle injury for people to see. Do you? Well, I wouldn't say I like talking about it, but it just adds a bit I'm of... I'm like, this doesn't... This is not the scars that I know. <laughs> She's a humble human. <laughs> I don't go around being like, hey, guys, I broke my ankle. Are you sure? But, <laughs> but <laughs> if people ask, it's just a much easier way of... To... Less words with yeah. a picture. Do you That's know what? I me. agree. That's the same with Collie B. You just show the picture. Collie B. Collie B? Collie B. <laughs> yeah. So all, all injuries have a little nickname, so... During your like physio and you just like, oh, Collie B's feeling okay today or Collie She B's means her collarbone. Collarbone, yeah. <laughs> Collie B. Um, so Collie B, tell me about how <laughs> Collie B, the incident occurred because the concept of you still playing through that. Have you ever done the collarbone before? Like, did you no. have a reference point? No, no reference. If you had to rank it on a scale of painfulness, how did you not realize that it had gone when you did it? It was pure denial. I uh, was maybe like out six minutes into the game. Mm. And there was three things that I thought. So I went down and I felt like a crack. And I was like, no, this isn't good. But at this point, denial. I'm like, it's six minutes. I've got six nations around the corner. I'm fine. The physio did her assessments. As soon as she did the strength session when you yeah, have to resist. I was like, nah, patched her off. And I was like, I'm fine and just ran ran away from her. Was this because you were playing in the big game and it's in that cauldron and the atmosphere and everything? It was the big game, right? Yeah, big game, yeah. Uh, I, do you know when you're on the pitch, you don't actually really take, you obviously are aware of the, the atmosphere and the situation, you just want to play. And I think my initial thought was, shit, Six Nations is around the corner, I'm fine. And then to set the scene, Brent, our beloved Safa, always gives like a motivational chat in the week and his chat on thursday uh he was going on and on and then he looks at me and he goes and bonner if your shoulder's hanging off <laughs> you keep going you hit the next no. breakdown Stop. you make the next tackle you just keep going you just give everything so i went down and i was like that bitch literally <laughs> literally predicted the future like <laughs> how how has he done that? And I was like, well, I've got to go on. Like, <laughs> I've got to make that next tackle. <laughs> and I'd also fueled like I was running a marathon. So I was like, six minutes in, going to cut it. Yeah, literally. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to be fine. If I can make it through this game, like, I'll be good for Six Nations. So I was in total denial, even though when I'd patched Corin off, ran, it was a line out, ran to the girls, and they gave the line out call. And I was like, that's me lifting. And I thought, right, if I can't lift, I don't deserve to be on this pitch. And I went to Rob, I was like, mate, does it look all right? And she was like, 
I just put your shirt back up. <laughs> After the game, she was like, your bone was literally like popping out your but skin. But she still let you try and lift someone. Yeah, because I was like, yeah, yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I can move it, I can move it. <laughs> Lifted so badly. We were trying to exit. We exited. Um, and then I can't remember who came like on the counter back, but she cut to the other side of me, but still proceeded to like, pan me off. <laughs> on this side and I was like oh not too good went for a jackal because I thought you know what could maybe jackal right so second rows generally it's not something they're known for Jacqueline generally longer legged yeah. harder yeah you know yeah bigger mm. space easier to bosh through Bonner loves it she loves a jackal and to be fair to you you're incredibly successful at it actually whales four of them <laughs> oh. <laughs> Come right, on. I don't I don't normally like chat about a game, but talk it up. Game. Talk it up a bit more. Come on. In particular, I woke up, I was like next level, like hyped, <laughs> next level. And and the fist pumps post turnover are oh. quite something. Because so when the ref goes the whistle, much. I don't kick. Well, I don't That's kick for points. Point. Yeah. <laughs> just to clarify, I do kick, just not through the triple post. threat. <laughs> <laughs> um a jackal like a turnover it's it's like scoring yeah fair. that's your try yeah that's my anyway try. so you try and jackal oh yeah uh not so good uh and then i remember being down again and abby was on my outside and she was like bonds get up get up there's an overlap but get in the line so i'm like okay I've got to get up abby needs me and then i ran out the line and almost get an uh, intercept almost <laughs> if i'd got this intercept I think I could have kicked a 50-22. <laughs> and I would have had marriage proposals flooding in. Like, I swear to God. But instead, I went for the intercept. And, like, that was the turning point for Colby B. I couldn't. I got snipered, oh. literally, to the floor. And then it was game over. Oh, Colby B. I know. What a party pooper. I know. I love the fact that this intercept that never quite came off, <laughs> it wasn't I was going to run the length or I was going to pass it to Abby. He was outside and she was going to score it. I'm going to kick a 50 22. Yeah. I'm going to be a hero. Yeah. Of all the options. Of all the options. That we, was were, the one. we were camped in our, okay, fine. in our corner for a while. So actually, a 50 22 would have been quite good, would have relieved pressure. <laughs> to be fair, Abby would have also probably <laughs> ran a 100 meter try, but you know. <laughs> It's a big game, it's big occasion. Good. You are a natter. You realise that objectively, <laughs> like as I'm sitting here, I'm listening to you talk and I go, there is something wrong with someone. When someone's already, you know it's cracked, like it's ouchie bra. Like th th that can't, no normally you wouldn't react like that. Is that just adrenaline? Oh yeah, adrenaline. I think adrenaline does like amazing things. Because as soon as I was off, gas and air couldn't come quick enough <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so you went from hero to <laughs> like screaming <laughs> gave me all of the yeah. everything they tried taking the shirt off and i was like just cut it and they're like no no we want to save the shirts had our names on and i was like cut it <laughs> now <laughs> and it was yeah yeah not so good after that but that is some powerful stuff right there yeah adrenaline's a good drug brilliant mm. wow the team must really miss you now uh, Oh, it's a team sport, isn't it, for a reason? You've got folk that, that do a job and fill in, but um, yeah, I'm excited to be back. Now, how far off are you in your rehab process? What are we talking here? So I've got another scan next week. If that goes well and the bones knit together, then I can hopefully start a return to contact, but it's very much just dependent on how the bones heal in. How long is a collie bee usually? Eight I actually weeks? wouldn't know. Eight weeks. Oh. That's a Scottish eight weeks, I think. Yeah. yeah. That's optimistic. Because <laughs> when that's nah, possible. Because when the Scotland team came out <laughs> and the Six Nations list, you were obviously named in it, weren't you? And everyone was like, she's just broken a collarbone. Yeah, there's a chance I can make the last game. <laughs> yeah, because I know if, if I my scan was name. good, last game's on the cards. No, uh, I'm here for it, believe. <clears throat> believe. Just a bit of padding. It's plated. It's. But you know, the whole world now knows that that's the shoulder they should go for. Come at me. Oh. Come at me. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> who is that last game? <laughs> Wait, who is Ireland? Ireland. Is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at your yeah. face. You're like, ah. Oh, yes. yes. This girl is never short of a like pump up, whoop and holler, Spartan. Do you remember that? Right. Video? <laughs> <laughs> 
like we yeah. Scotland were playing Lightning at, on, on a friendly. At, what were we doing? No. So it was pre-season. Pre-season so for, for Love for Lightning. It was pre-season, and for the Scottish girls, they were in their World pre Cup World Cup qualifier qualifiers. camp. Yeah, and obviously Love for <laughs> have got a load of a Scottish contingent, yeah. so we kind of. They needed to play. We needed to get going in pre-season. So it was like a perfect opportunity to go on a little trip. We got away. They got some game time. Go on, you, t you tell it. And we, we have like themes. Now the coach has like a Spartan theme, Gladiator. And everyone's a bit like, oh, Brian, what are you up to? And I love it. I'm like, <laughs> yes. Battle fucking Beating ready. Let's chest. go. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> so we're watching. But ahead of like a pre-season friendly like against gladiator. the club side <laughs> right <laughs> like, flaming all past this window and all the scotland girls are like this but i'm like at the edge of my seat <laughs> like come on <laughs> so it's like we're walking down to this pitch like all in our kit because it's not it's not serious this is like Pre-season friendly, we're playing like four 20 minutes. A game's a game, Scars. Yeah, really Ooh. fun. So we walk, past this, we walk past this window where they're having this meeting. And it's it's one of those where everyone was like, okay, they're having a meeting. Like, don't look, don't look, don't look. <laughs> and then out of the corner of our eye, it's just like this Spartan scene on this giant TV. And we're all like, what the fuck is going on? And then when we spoke to the girls <clears> right <throat> afterwards, they were all like just dying, wanted to go under a rock. Like Nelly was just hanging her head scotty yeah. the same and then they were all just like apart from bonner bonner yeah. loved it she was in literally love it love a battle scene it was the funniest thing because yeah. we were all just like like playing our music with our little boom box hey, just me trotting me. down like pre-season we just yeah. to me i'll probably look at you and discuss sea. like they're not taking this seriously yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is them sending us a message they yeah. don't respect yeah. us <laughs> literally that's probably what went through my head <laughs> Pre-season friendly. You're a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing friendly about it. Yeah, literally. Come on. <laughs> it was so funny. So um, now that you've been on the punditry circuit during yeah. this TikTok Women's Six Nations, how's that gone for you? So fun. Like, it's brief. It's super brief, but how fun. Yeah. I, r I remember the first one, you were rocking like a navy coat and you had your hair down. I was it's all like, about the outfit. Girls been living. <laughs> I had a glow up me. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I love it. I love seeing everyone trot out their punditry looks and then like, mm -hmm, yep, yep, yep. We're just talking here. We know exactly what's going on. And then um, in between all of this, you're just rehabbing with an eye on the prize. You need to get back in time. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rehabbing with Harlequins, Physio Corrin. They're literally like therapists, aren't they? Physios. Mm -hmm. They're there through the tears, mm -hmm. the laughs. Mm -hmm. They're often better than a psychologist without being rude to psychologists. Yeah. But they're there in those casual moments. So they're actually, if they're good people, like yeah. I'm sure she is. Yeah. They're the people that you actually open up to a bit more. Because yeah. it's not like you're walking into a psychologist room and you're like, oh my God, I've got now to talk I about have my to feelings. Talk. Yeah. Yeah, because you're busy with something and it's in that process of busyness that sometimes stuff just comes loose. Mm. Yeah. Even like yesterday I go in and I thought I was being normal and she already was like, what's wrong? Or like, doesn't even and have did you to... burst into tears? <laughs> to be fair, yesterday I was actually okay. But <laughs> Joan sometimes just need a plan and like she knows straight away without even asking that, okay, we need more of a plan for this week or something. Yeah. They're just... Yeah, a bit off. of structure that gives you things yeah. that you can take off and say, I've achieved this and I'm moving. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about that occasion from your perspective, because we've had the Sarah Hunter show where we, we had fully English perspective on that game. Some people um, looked at it and said, oh, it's a bit of a big to do and it is still a Women's Six Nations match. It's a competitive one. It's one where two teams have prepared to really bring it. Um, but there was this beautiful moment when she went off where everyone was stopped. Like the game stopped, the Scottish girls applauded her as she left the pitch as much as anyone else did. And it did feel a little bigger than... Yeah, like it was. And I think since I've played with her at Lightning as well, and I think just whatever nation you play for, she just carries so much respect. Like she's such a respected player. Mm. Um, and she's done so much for the sport as well. And I think... It wasn't a, a matter of, oh, it's England v Scotland. It was actually we're celebrating an incredible player's career and like hats off. It was it was a really special moment to be a part of. And I love that it was up there in Newcastle. Just, yeah. It must have been easier for your fans as well. Yeah, I think it, it was actually it was easier for, for Scotland. Than it was yeah. for us. Yeah. 
<laughs> when you unless have fans they, in the north? Unless, uh, no, unless they were from the toon. Yeah. Yeah. That's Newcastle, that is, Elmer. <laughs> I've been to Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly to cover cricket, but yes, I've been there. <laughs> Tell me about Scotland's performance in that game and what you made of it, pundit, pundit person from the sidelines. So, do you know what? I thought we were incredibly brave. Like, we had a lot of, like, penalty opportunities we could have kicked. But instead, the girls went for the corner, wanted to drive it, wanted to, like, set a platform with our line-outs. And, like, defensively, I thought first 20 was class, last 10 was class. Like, we got off the line and we made it hard for England at times. Um, and from an attack point of view, we wanted to play a bit more. Um, than we have been recently and that was really exciting to see like we've got a lot of youngsters coming through um, and players given the opportunity to play um, with injuries and things so actually like yeah the scoreline isn't the greatest but I think there's positives to take from that for sure. From a Scottish perspective like when you see the fixture list and you see England first do you see that as like a good thing or would you rather almost like get going with other other games first and then have that one. Do you know what I mean? Because it's yeah. it's obviously like a, a tough, that's a tough game to start with in any campaign. Yeah. But like, is that one where you're like, right, no, we can just go and attack this, see what happens and then build from there? Pretty much, yeah. Because mm. it's been the same for the past, what, two yeah. Six Nations now. Um, like, don't get me wrong, it would be cool to to have like a target game up first. But equally, as you say, it's right, we're going up against the best. What an opportunity, let's go. And um, you just see it a wee bit differently. And this England team also obviously, I mean, comes minus Scars, but also minus a few other names. Here at club when they're like, oh, injury crisis in England. <laughs> I'm like, you wanna, you wanna talk about that to me, do you? <laughs> Your player pool is insane. <laughs> Brian E. Cleel and I'm like, babes, you have not got an injury crisis. <laughs> Reality check o'clock. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, I appreciate that there is a lot of injuries. I think a lot of injuries through all the unions. It must be like post World no, Cup. It, there but is. Yeah. Yeah, and a long season, like 10 games on the bounce, then into Six Nations. I think it's just a bit of a... It is different to previous years. It's the it's that timing, I think. It's Yeah, I don't know what it is, and you'll never be able to properly quantify, I don't think, but when we were doing, who did we just play? Italy, we list them 19 English players. Like that's insane. 14 of those were at the World Cup and that didn't include obviously like a Mo, mm. Amber, etc. Mm. So like we're talking top quality players. You guys are obviously s similar in terms of, I think the biggest thing at the moment is the quality of player that's injured. Yeah. So like Scares. Bonner. <laughs> I nearly <laughs> went with that and I just couldn't then. Myself. Um, <laughs> Bonner, Emma Wassell, like basically two starting second rows for Scotland. Mm. Like big, big people, as well as obviously some other people as is well. Is Jade coming back? Jade, huge. Is she back this week? Cannot confirm, <laughs> cannot deny. <laughs> oh. Do you know, this is what you get with the Scots. Come on. We've got loads at Loughborough and you'll just have a casual conversation with them about stuff and then they all of a sudden clam up and you're like, oh, what did I say? <laughs> and it's because they don't want to divulge something. I'm like, guys, here, come on. seriously. We're a tight-knit family, okay? <laughs> We're not going to do anything that might jeopardise what's coming up. <laughs> but yeah, unsure. Uh, <laughs> cannot confirm, cannot deny. I don't know what I can and can't say. But <laughs> is this just you not knowing? <laughs> or is you I not I think that saying? answer tells us what might be happening <laughs> at the weekend. If we're on. Okay, before we get into Wales, Scotland, because there's so much there to talk about, um, Honda has asked us to give a one-word review of the weekend's action. We did the Welsh perspective last week, but let's go for an English and Scottish perspective. If you had to give the Honda one-word review on that occasion. Have you written okay. it down? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Sarah, please reveal. Oh, me first. Come on. Oh. Heartbreaking. Oh. Yeah. It was a match to be won and we didn't. You didn't ride Sparta, so. Yeah. Sadly not. <laughs> Sadly not this time. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> Next time. Yeah. It was a good game though. Just from that point of view. No, it was. It, Wales, Scotland, always a good spectacle. Mm. It's a good and game. Your sorry, yes, my one more review. Um, width, Shululu. width, right? <laughs> Explain, <laughs> it's not It's not one of my favorite English words. <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> no, 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 it is like depth. width, <laughs> width of what, Scars? <laughs> well, Sarah, <laughs> 
what did you get up to <laughs> with <laughs> that England's play? <clears throat> so. <laughs> this is not childish. <laughs> I went to Wick because, <clears throat> fun fact, we obviously got a load of heat during the World oh, Cup. Did you? <laughs> during the World Cup. <laughs> Oh, are you dragging her on her own show? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's unbelievable. We got a lot. Here, you're inviting me. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, please go. Please proceed. <laughs> We've obviously got a lot of heat in the past, especially during World Cup for driving line out tries, being a bit dull, lots through the forwards. Plan A, plan A, plan A. Exactly. However, nine of the 12 tries at the weekend or the, the in the Italy game were scored by the back three. Abby Dow four, Jess Breach two. Abby, uh, sorry. Claude two. Uh, Jess Breach three, Claude two. Whatever I said, yeah. Th those things. So actually, the ambition, stretching it a bit more, I think it's a good thing to acknowledge. But also probably mm. present in some of the other games as well. Um, Vernier, French girl, was very good. Yeah. That lot liked to move the ball a little bit. So, yes. Unconventional, but I think justified. <laughs> Speaking of unconventional, <laughs> if you haven't seen it yet, Honda um, invited us to a brilliant day out on the track with the Honda HRVs. There were two of them, and we competed against the boys from the good, the bad, and the rugby. Turns out, Scasmo won. I've given it away. I know, but you need to go watch it because it is incredibly entertaining, even if only for Mo dragging James Haskell just a little bit. Um, let's talk Scotland Wales really in it literally until the 70th minute i feel like that score 22 34 not not fair reflection uh you guys is it fair to say roughly about a year behind or would you not say that that's accurate yet i don't think so like i genuinely think we could have won that game um and if you think about our last meet with them could have won that as well. Um, we're just, it's like the top 2% of seeing out a win. And I, I don't think that that is a full year behind them at all. I just think it's really small fixes. Yeah. Do you think, this is a bit out there, but obviously Wales have a huge Gloucester contingent. They've got a decent Bristol contingent. Two teams that are going really well and therefore those players are actually quite used to being on that side of things, maybe turning the tight ones into victories, etc. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of your girls play for us. We're not going crazy. <laughs> you <laughs> no, said it. No, I know. I'm, no, I'm joking. No. But do you know what I mean? Yeah, There's no. potentially something in like the psyche of the individuals that then make up a team, potentially. I don't know. Mm. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I think that, I think we downplay a lot of like what your head can do. And your brain is such a huge part of it that I don't think we incorporate enough into our training um that sort of like mental aspect of it and i do th there's got to be something in it yeah. like if you've gone from a world cup into a club season and you've not won much that's like a practice in itself isn't it yeah. of seeing it out and yeah i think it's a good point um the scores just to support what you were just saying 24 19 in 22 so five point margin in 22, 21, there was a seven point margin for Scotland. And in 2019, you guys lost by two, 2018, you lost by one, 2017, you won by one. And you've said before that that 2017 victory, 15, 14 over Wales was the moment that everything changed. Why do you say that? So that was, <clears throat> sorry, Shade Monroe era first the first um scotland coach i had that capped me um put a lot of like time and effort into the girls just basically drilling basics and foundations and i think at that point that was the moment we realized yeah we can win a game we're mixing with other unions at the top of the game like we started to get like so seeds of belief that i think then set us up for qualifying for the world cup last year mm. And then that belief and playing at the World Cup, is there one thing that you can identify that you guys got out of going to New Zealand and being there? Is there a, um, a central lesson almost that you can kind of say that's the thing that, that crystallized out of that experience for you? I think so, like on reflection, 
it was a really tough tournament to be at. Mm. Um, but look, Australia, Wales games, we proved that we can be there and we can compete. Um, anyone that watched those games, regardless of nationality, thought you put on such a good display of rugby, really exciting games. And we proved that Scotland can play and compete on the world stage. I'm really excited to see the next couple of games. What's your order? You've got France, France next. Italy, Ireland. Okay, Italy, Ireland especially. Mm. I think I think you'll definitely get one victory. I think the Ireland game at the end, certainly how both sides are trending at the moment. I think that that will be a really good game. But Italy as well, I think they, they, they struggled against England more so than I thought they were going to. Yeah. Um, and I think there's there's two really really big opportunities mm. and not that France isn't an opportunity but um definitely looking towards that back end of the competition yeah, yeah. two home games as well yeah, yeah exactly and Wales in hot form two consecutive wins first time that's happened for them since 2015 um which is impressive but it is what do you what do you make of that Skaz you li- did you listen to my little hangout in the Vale obviously oh did you snoop it what does that what mean? Did you like listen in? <laughs> Jargon again? Yeah. Before. Sorry. <laughs> it's when you do a close listening. You just you, I thought that you was a close dropping. Look, snoop. Oh, okay. Have a snoop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could do that as well. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think? What did you think? Sorry. Um, no, I enjoyed it. Um, I didn't watch it. I mm. need to watch it to have a little proper snoop. Um, but no, I, yeah, I, I thought the girl spoke really well, I think. Um, Johan spoke really well as well Mm. just in terms of you know obviously how much their professional contracts have given them um, just from obviously a lifestyle point of view more so than anything else probably Um, and then obviously that in turn naturally often translates onto the field and I think we're seeing that Um, we uh, when we've spoken about Wales previously just I think that extra year does give them a a head start on some of the other nations and it again it's hard to to know properly but I think when, certainly from my own experience when you first become professional you are literally just making it up as you go along to start with and then you settle and I think it's that period when you've settled they seem to have a really clear structure a clear week um, yeah. and that just consistent time together which I think is is really coming to the fore now um, but I enjoyed the pod I enjoyed um, the bit about Fionn and her national anthem because when I was watching the game I was like who is that I can hear it and now I understand (laughs) fair play felt it get it absolutely at the arms park at the weekend you might not hear her because sold out crowd so many people in Cardiff did you hear the Fionn Lewis anthem on the tv coverage they held the effects mic really close to her into something to behold it's like a solo performance yeah Yeah, no it's big it's Very like good. she went in 120 percent. Yeah. Like girl. The Sparta, yeah, exactly. yeah. The Sparta version yeah. of the anthem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. I appreciate that. <laughs> Deep, intense performance. What is your anthem performance intensity like? Oh, I'm a belter. Although <laughs> I am quite an emotional girl. So. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> the feelings start rolling down your cheeks. Waz has to hmm. give me a little. Because you go squeeze. in shirt number order, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, so you're always next. Well, if selection similar, she's not fitness. Yeah. You're um, next to the same people. Yeah, me and so she hold hold you tight, basically, real tight. <laughs> yeah, because I'll start going. Really? Yeah, it's such an emotional thing. I love it, <laughs> but yeah, I have to keep a lid on it, or else I'd just blub. Yeah. So you focus on the words. You just stay in the moment. You sing your way through it, mm-hmm. and then you guys, you guys don't get the soul pipe a bit, do you? Like the men do. No. I love that. That is oh. spine tingling. Unreal. Oh. Corner of BTM. Yeah. Mm. I think they should do that. Or they should drop the second half out and just go a cappella. Yeah. That's also cool. That's cool. also brilliant. Very that cool. is, yeah. Spine tingling. Mm. Spine tingling. It is. Um, who is the Fionn Lewis in the Scotland lineup? <sighs> who would belt it? Do you know what? Rach belts yeah, it. she does. Oh, yeah. She does, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I think straight away I'd go for Rach. Rona. <laughs> Sorry, I laugh because she sings so deep, but <laughs> Rona belts it. <laughs> yeah. But really deep. But deep. So I think like those around her like struggle to like like pitch it because <laughs> she, she's so deep and they're kind of like trying to match it. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and does it go? I can. But um, probably wrote another f- one. It's, that is, pitching it is a thing. We often, I don't know if we do it as much anymore, but certainly we used to, just before we'd sing, th- it would come down the line and everyone would go, start low, start low, and pass it down, start low. Because if you start God Save the King now, high, the only way is up. Yeah. So that- you have to start low and slowly get up. Yeah. That's a tactic it's right a ta- there. It is yeah, an anthem yeah. tactic. For po- people who've got poor vocal ranges and abilities, you need tactics. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> You're going to sing Trust this on TV. Me. People are going to hear it at home. Let's start low. Yeah. Uh, any any anthem tactics on uh, no, just Flower of Scotland? No, it's an sing easy thing. Be proud. Go yeah. hard and hold on, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I feel exactly. like it's honestly one of the most singable ones. I feel yeah. like you can really get into it. It's the best, easily. 100%. Uh, what, 100%. <laughs> you were going to nod. You are like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that. I do love that. Yeah. I do, love that. do you know, that at my school, we did sing songs during rugby season. And we had a version. Sing songs. So that's what we called it. But I wasn't in Africa on school. So all of this is going to sound wrong. This cut co- Right. I don't know if this is the same thing. But this comes up on my TikTok algorithm of like Safa schools with boys and saxophones chanting and Just, belting out yeah. bangers. Yeah. It's class. Yeah. Th- imagine a thousand two hundred kids standing like a bank like this. And we had a version of sing songs. We had a song that we sang that was your anthem, <laughs> but with different lyrics. So we used to sing it while we were supporting well, our team. Flower really of Scotland's cool. tune, but with different lyrics. Huh. We yeah. had assembly songs like cool. Fire in Your Lamp and stuff like that. <laughs> What's it you know what I'm about? What does Fire in Your Lamp sound Fire. like? I think we want to know. <laughs> Ah, like assembly songs, you know, like <laughs> absolute bangers. Tea like, everywhere. Um, oh, what's the ones called? You must know. You definitely you would have sang them. I've never sung about fire in my <laughs> fire in my lamp. I'm gonna get them. Honestly, you would have absolutely had, had like assembly bangers. Like yeah, we did godly it. ones. Godly, godly ones. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, godly ones. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, all sh- things bright and beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about speaking of anthems. Your first cap off the bench against Spain in one of two women's rugby world cup qualifiers in November 2016. Seven years ago. Mm. Does it feel like seven years? Mm, yes and no. <laughs> Why? The body, yes. yes. <laughs> but also like it doesn't feel that long ago. Me and Rach got the same we we ran on at the same time together. Oh, yeah, we've literally good. been through a journey together. Um, that, so me and Rachel have actually got a really funny story about this. We were, we were new to rugby, pretty new to rugby. We were both kind of transferred from other sports. And in the, in the run up to this game, I she, know this story. She you know told us it. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, go on, carry on. All through our training, we wanted to be just like quick. So like the, the theme for this was like speed intensity and i remember shade saying as soon as nine's hands are on the ball go just snipe him so i was like okay nine's hands on the ball and i remember saying to rach so i thought the nine had to lift the ball up this was like how like greenhorn we were she was like yeah i did too we'll find out in the week never did ran on first instant of the game nine hands on ball (laughs) pelted her (laughs) absolutely pelted her Blue penalty, and I looked at Rach, and Rach was like, "Now we know." <laughs> <laughs> Minutes later, Rach's first instant. I can't remember what Rach did. Did she knock it on? She did something, but we looked at each other and were like, "Oh, that was a good debut, that." <laughs> um, first yeah. and last, <laughs> yeah, literally. Thankfully, it wasn't our last. But <laughs> so. Funny. And this was what two year two years after you picked up a rugby ball. Yeah, yeah, I came into sport pretty late. Yeah. Wow, that's astounding. That's really impressive. But you obviously are just an absolute athlete because you don't excel and become a GB rower by, you know, being a slouch. How much did it help? Oh, like I think just gives you a bit of an engine, doesn't it? You just keep going like a bit of an endurance base. And like, I think from a strength and conditioning point of view, like the foundations were already there. Mm. And um, I played netball growing up. So I had the sort of like hand-eye coordination, obviously, needed to learn to pass backwards but <laughs> I very much have Nolly to thank for for getting me into rugby because I went to Hartby College as a rower and she at the time was coaching the girls and became a bit of a mentor of mine because I struggled with nerves competing at international and obviously she was an international herself um, 
and it wasn't until I went to uni later down the line we bumped into each other when she was on England camp and you know what Nolly's like sometimes you just ask one question like how are you and it looks into your soul and then suddenly you just start crying out of nowhere um and I was just like I don't know if I'm enjoying uh enjoying rowing I'm a bit miserable like I'm doing well at it but I just hate it um and she said right go on a break in the meantime play rugby keep your fitness up um I think you'll really enjoy it and I did and I never looked back so we would like to it's thank fun, Danielle Waterman yeah. absolute England superstar for I'm sure Scotland is forever grateful yeah yeah she's churned a few out of Hartbury as well she has she? Yeah. yeah she's yeah. just going in there like a little influencer going nicking people off other sports are oh, you sad come here <laughs> let yeah. me show Rugby you will make yeah. you happy here's an oval shaped <laughs> ball it's, it's, everything's going to be better but it, what is it that was better about it okay first trading session uh it was I think it was at Loughborough Uni seven session I rocked up a pair of trainers and the girls were like uh you'll probably need some boots like what size shoe are you and I was like they're going to give me a pair of boots to wear. In rowing, that would never happen. <laughs> like, your your competitor, your teammate is your rival at the end of the day. So, like, what's your kit is your kit. In rowing, I was, uh, sorry, in rugby, I was like, oh, my gosh. They just let me a pair of boots to wear for the whole, like, for the session. And then, like, training was varied. It just had an automatic sense of belonging. And I think that was the difference for me. Like, I just felt like I belonged somewhere. Mm. It was amazing. Yeah. And some people are individual athletes and some people are not. Yeah. You're not. No. <laughs> I quickly realised, like, with rowing, I wanted to go to Olympics. It was a childhood dream. I was like, yes, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. And I actually think, like, if you don't enjoy the process, is the end goal worth it? Um, and rowing has got to be one of the most brutal processes as well, surely. Yeah. Like, it's long slogs, long hours, lonely hours. I'm very much like a team like yeah. if I'm struggling, I know that my team, like my teammate needs me and that is motivation to just go. And on the topic of struggling, it's not only been easy going, like you've not had like a sunny, you know, golden time. 2022 Six Nations was a winless campaign for Scotland. So it's not like you stepped into rugby and, you know, the angels sang and it was just easy, plain sailing. You've had your fair share of trials and really tough times so it still feels worth it yeah but yeah i like scotland <laughs> um is a roller coaster um but like i wouldn't want to do it with anybody else i honestly love those girls like they're my sisters like even the management coaches um if you're having a absolute shitter off the pitch my manager will phone me and check that i'm okay or send me shortbread and iron brew like <laughs> Ellen Dixon is honestly like my rugby mom, but I don't know. I just think like I wouldn't like I wouldn't change it for the world. I sort of learnt my lesson with rowing that if you're not enjoying the process, then the angle is probably not worth it. But with rugby, we are get we are getting there like slowly but surely, and I just wouldn't want to do it with anyone else. I love that even your manager, who's Scot she's Scottish, right? Yeah, fulfills all Scottish stereotypes yeah. and buys shortbread nine bro. <laughs> yeah. How much shortbread did you get when the collar collie bee was sticking through the skin? <laughs> I love how uncomfortable that is for you to say. You're like collar 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 bee. <laughs> the rara, that thing. <laughs> to be fair, not that much, but I stayed with Jade. Jade took me in. Mm. for a few weeks her and um, her wife Helen put up with me bless them and there was a little bit of short and I say a little bit a lot of shortbread there um, but you always get a bit funny when you're injured because you're not doing too oh. much it's a real tricky place to be you don't want to put on lots of like weight <laughs> so then equally sometimes need a bit you of comfort see me food. smashing the grapes earlier <laughs> looked at those cakes and they already made me put on a stone we literally walked <laughs> past a cake stand on the way in here from the train and she went oh look at those and I said come on we're running late it's just been Easter weekend as well yeah all of the Easter eggs no but that is a thing it's like a I think as females, we're probably worse for it generally, but because we're used to being so active mm. yeah. and then actually, well, you're, you're still active, but the, how you're being active is completely different. Um, it's quite a stressful, more stressful time on the old calorie intake. Mm. It's quite sad actually. Has professionalism changed that? Do you feel like you now have a different level of almost responsibility or task focused? like kind of approach to this kind of thing does it impact different calls differently uh, 
Um, good question. I think for me personally, no, just because just we yes, we have only just gone professional in terms of like monetary aspect, mm. but actually a lot of us have been professional with our yeah. training, our mannerisms, mm. our off field stuff for years now. So you yeah. just do it. Professional with a small P. Yeah. 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 And I think the money's just helping from a recovery point of view or like having to do less work elsewhere more, rather than kind of your habits and I think for me it's it's the input so specifically to that topic of nutrition and when you're mm. injured you don't want to eat you feel like you can't eat as much blah 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 but actually when you're educated on that like your body's trying to heal you can't do that on grapes alone do you know what I mean it, yeah. it, it needs to be fueled it needs to be maybe it's some supplements that will help yeah, with true. that specific thing or it's the winter so actually vitamin d is really important for healing all of those sorts of things but actually until perhaps you're in an environment where you do have a full-time nutritionist some of those things have previously been missed mm. yeah very good point and food mm. is fuel <laughs> it is a general like it's yeah. not ju you're not just eating for comfort you're also eating because everything you put in is what eventually helps you recover i eat for comfort <laughs> yeah both of them <laughs> both of them definitely there's a place for both but both of <laughs> no, those 100%. your feelings are relevant as well <laughs> yeah. what does Scottish rugby need to focus on next when it comes to the women like what needs to be done I asked Berth this yeah you did and Berth answered it so well yeah. if you were the boss and we just gave you all of the power now oh make business cards <laughs> yeah I would actually make business cards you would uh, make what <laughs> business cards no, I'm joking <laughs> tell us the business card story do you actually want to know the business card story we'll get to that next okay but the serious question first I would get the girls in oh, it's so hard because you've got club so like have a really good long pre-season with each other play get warm-up games in just need game time so it's six weeks six proper weeks. weeks if you think it's kind of what you would have done pre-world cup was it yeah you were together for a long period then yeah fine so it's it's almost like the consistency of, of the squad for a Chunk bigger of chunk time. of time yeah, yeah. i'd say because so. then that's a it's such a good head like head start into the season yeah and then everyone disappears but actually you've got everybody to a really good place fitness wise off the holidays mm. you know knitting together some of the the scottish things and principles of play or whatever and then people can disappear and then be really individual with their development mm. because they are full-time um, and obviously specifics to their club etc and then when you come back to six nations it's not like because sometimes coming to Six Nations feels like the beginning of a season. Yeah. And now the Six Nations is delayed. Obviously, that is even more delayed. Maybe. Yeah, I think time. Uh, what else would I do? Would you want to be up there more? It's really hard because if you look at the English model and a lot of you spend more time at clubs and I think that works. And I think actually more consistent time at club, you can develop your own skills, play consistent rugby. You can actually compete for a spot on the team each week and I think if we were to be in Scotland more that would be quite tricky. Would you want to play for a Scottish club if they're say like like an Ed Edinburgh Edinburgh or Glasgow had really strong prolific female side they played against Welsh sides they played against Irish sides I think if it was established yeah yeah that would be Who quite would be fun. team Edinburgh Edinburgh she says with a smile. <laughs> Why Edinburgh? Glasgow wants to know. Glasgow's on the phone. I think you know why I'm laughing, but no. no I don't. Just love the city. Love the city. Home and? of rugby. That's all. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go back to the business card story. Why were you in fits of giggles about printing business cards for business cards? Scotland women's rugby. Have you got it with you? Does you somewhere it? on the set? Does your business card <laughs> say Sarah Bonner, Jackal Machine, Triple Threat? Actually, <laughs> Collie B, <laughs> Collie B Survivor, um, Cold. I'm done with it. Tell the story. Where's your business card? <laughs> Tell the story. To the right of you. Um, oh. <laughs> right on the logo, strong. She Very did strong. not. That's <laughs> guerrilla marketing for you. <laughs> <laughs> Can I please give you a high five? <laughs> that is. 
That is winning right that there. Good. Women yeah. who sport. Her it's actually podcast. old, old logo. Um, we got told it might be quite childish, so we changed it. Um, <laughs> but me and Rona have got like a, a sports podcast. When we started it a few years ago, we're like, we need to get some merch. So what better than a business card? But actually, who uses business cards these days? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so we would just scatter them around Loughborough Uni. <laughs> Library, the cafe, the, and the gym. And the cleaners kept on going, what is this? Yeah. What is this? What is Women who sport. <laughs> with a QR code on the front. Yeah. So I actually, if I was in charge of Scottish Rugby, that's, I'd start with business cards. Business cards. Plant them. All the schools, get girls involved in rugby. <laughs> QR code for tickets to the games. Nice. Fill the stadiums. Yeah, that's what I'd do. Okay. Sarah Bonner, queen for a day. Let's get her in there. Yeah. Love that. Brilliant. Okay. Um, RAF, we need to talk about this job description of yours. What does it mean when it says you're a flying officer in the RAF police? Because that sounds very intimidating. And how do you also then be a rugby player? Okay. So flying officer is my rank. Um, I don't actually fly planes. Um, I would love to, but my brain doesn't work that way. <laughs> <laughs> It would be quite fun, but no. Um, yeah, so I'm a flying officer in the Royal Air Force. Um, and like my profession within that is is the police. So myself and Amy Cocaine, both police officers. Um, she she was she played a big part in getting me into the Air Force. Um, but once I'd done my training, I was posted to DSPG, so like a, a kind of small police school down in Portsmouth um, until my elite athlete status application went through. And then I've been on that just over a year now and it gets reviewed on an annual basis. Um, and it's pretty much them saying, right, go and represent the Royal Air Force in your Harlequins jersey, your Scotland jersey, and be the best you can be really. What did you do before you got your elite athlete status and basically they took the leash off and you could just go play rugby? Before then, what were you doing on a daily um, basis? So I was working in a like a security training unit. So I stayed at the policing school where I did my training and worked with um, a few of the guys on the base there. And it was pretty much myself getting to grips with a lot of the lingo within the policing world and the Royal Air Force because there is a lot of abbreviations um, and kind of joining in on meetings, um, briefings, down reps, um, really exciting, really enjoyed it. But you probably need to be in post for like at least six months before you can really like get stuck into it because there's so much to learn and, and take on because um, most postings last three to four years and then you move on to something different because there's so many different avenues you can go in with police, whether it's cyber security, whether it's your just general policing and safety of, a, of an airbase, whether it's protective security, um, counter-terrorism. There's, there's so many different avenues. It's a really exciting job to be in. Um, so I'm certainly looking forward to getting stuck into it post, post playing career. What did Amy look at Skaz's face? All of that just went. Yeah. <laughs> it's because Amy's told it me before, and I didn't take it in. Uh, but what is it that Amy said? This is what I want to know. So obviously you are influenceable, because can I, I take a guess at what Amy said? Because <laughs> <laughs> Danielle Waterman is the reason you now play rugby because yeah. you were unhappy in your rowing. What did Amy Cocaine say about the RAF that got you hooked? So I'd always had a military itch. My dad, my granddad, they're they're ex-serving, and you are a geography teacher at this time in your life yes so you have a profession yes yes um so part of it was it was increasingly harder to do myself and the kids that I was teaching justice because of the time off I needed for rugby mm. um I love like the pastoral side of teaching and getting to know what made like kids tick and seeing them progress and improve. And I really loved that. But I had always had this military itch. I thought about joining after uni and then put it off and thought I'll go into teaching because I can, I can do my training in around that. Um, but at the time, I didn't really want to take six months to a year out of training to do my military training. And then it got to a point where Amy was like, mate, like if you pick up an injury, you might completely close that door off. Um, and she raves about it. She raves about the the forces and because that's because to to be accepted for basic training, if you'd have had say a previous 
decent knee injury or anything. They're things that they just immediately no. decline you for. Right? Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. yeah, medically you could just get declined. Quali B? Possibly. Wow. But it's fine now you're in. Now I'm in. You're yeah. in, you're okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I was going to say, how hard was training? Yeah. What were you going to say? Yeah. So in comparison with rugby, like pre-season. Because also Bonner's got a hell of an engine on her. Like when you do, when we used to be at Loughborough and we'd do um, like watt bike sessions and stuff like that, we'd all be like absolutely gunning for it with zero watts output, nothing useful. And Bonner's <laughs> a proper machine. So you're a proper athlete. So that makes me think, actually, would you in inverted commas breeze that training or was it really tough because of all the other stuff sleep deprivation lack of food because you do love a snack love a snack <laughs> <laughs> do love a snack <laughs> and those ration packs are full of cows and full of snacks <laughs> um, <laughs> right so uh, it, i think it was like other things that made the training difficult so during covid for the first two three months we weren't allowed off of base like they were the things that made it quite tricky but actually if you sign up to the military and you get deployed, then you're probably away for, for three months at a time. So probably quite a good first exposure to, to that sort of thing. Um, the PT and the fizz was hard, but I loved it. Like that was probably where I got a lot of the lads' respects. Um, like if I just beat them in a running session, then they'd be like, oh, maybe I'll listen to you. I mean, not, now this is me like tarnishing everyone, but like it is, you do have to earn... Mm bod's respects and you're in teams with each other and stuff and I, and not all the guys were like this at all but there was a few that like you're a female in the military and in p or not p pt was like my way of being like right okay i've got you on a run or something i'd like make it my mission to beat them and i loved it um and like on exercise and stuff i really enjoyed it like we did a week in uh the highlands I've actually got a funny story. So we're at the top of a Munro and we're filling up our waters. And I was like, guys, you don't need to put a tab in this. This is fresh Scottish water. You know what I'm like? <laughs> I'm like, this is the good the stuff. Bees the bee's knees. They're like, mm, I'm still going to put a tablet in it. I was like, nah, I don't need to. Uh, that night, we were oh, camp no. we were sleeping somewhere like the same height as the top of Snowdon. So it was blown. It was windy and it was freezing. And I was like, oh, no one feels so good. No. <laughs> oh. The Billy Big Balls chat came back to bite me in the arse, quite literally. I was not okay. <laughs> Luckily, one of the lads was like, here's some of my isotonic drinks. I think you need it the next day because I was dead. But no, like, I love that whole, like, physical side and pushing yourself. Because I think a lot of us only, like, train to, uh, we don't tap into all we've got. So I do enjoy that side of it. Because we always have an end point, don't we? Yeah. It's like, I don't know, 10 reps of 30 seconds or something when we're working hard or an 80 minute game or whatever. There's always an end point. Whereas I feel like stuff like that, there is always an end point, but you never know when it is, yeah. I'd imagine. Yeah. And also the difference is not to put rugby down, but you're training to play a game that has a referee. When you're training, military training, to survive, there is literally no referee there. It's you are you've got deployment kind of in the back of your mind the whole time, which is a very different energy, surely. Yeah, it's more I need to pay attention. I need to do this because if I'm in that situation, I want to be able to get out of it. I guess um, we're quite fortunate that, like I, I think the chances of like myself or Amy being in quite like a hostile environment are quite slim just with the way that warfare is moving and, and the landscape's changing. But I guess there's skills that you still need. Hectic. Fun. Well, well, see, that's why I'm not in the military. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I'm sitting here holding a microphone. <laughs> but that's what makes you so such a very compelling character in the game because you've got this intersect where you make a podcast, you're intensely aware of how you want the game to land, particularly in Scotland. Um, you love playing and, you know, all of the communal things that comes with that. But there is this kind of that performance driven thing where you really want to put yourself in very uncomfortable places um, and clearly absolutely live for it, which is brilliant to see. Now, talk to me about missing the inland game and run one of the Six Nations because you were on RAF duty, but not the kind we're talking about now. The RAF rugby duty. Yes, this is fun. So into <laughs> services is like the highlight of military calendars, really. So um, the army, the Royal Air Force and the Navy all play each other in like a round robin. Um, and unfortunately, I'm, I'm injured, so I miss this into services. But I actually think 
we're going to take it this home. This weekend, isn't it? Yeah. So we beat the Navy a couple of weeks ago. We've then got the Army this weekend in. If I was a betting gal, <laughs> I would say we're coming home with it. That's that's where it is. And this is the <clears throat> shirt. So that is the UCAF shirt, UK Armed Forces. So yeah. out of the three services, the best of the best get picked to then play for the UK Armed Forces and then they go on tour and play. So when we were in New Zealand at the World Cup, the UK Armed Forces were also out there playing in like the, the military games. So I'm yet to get a UCAF cap, but hopefully. Do they do they the play future. much? Yeah, like generally they probably get together like once a year at least, I'd say. Um, but there's something special about it. Like no team's probably ever the same just because of the nature of our job and people on deployment. But then equally, it is such a big thing in the calendar that folk on deployment still sometimes get pulled from it to come back and play. What? And it's really special. <laughs> it's kind of like a Babas feel. I've never played Babas, yeah. but from those that have, I get the impression that it's like a unique group of people that come together that embrace the values of rugby and the armed forces. They play hard, they work hard, and then they play hard. Oh, have a great party. And have a great party. <laughs> you dress that up really well then. That sounds yeah. really like professional and like, <laughs> serious. Yeah, and, that's yeah. the part of the RAF <laughs> thing I get. Like that, that the RAF rugby, <laughs> yes. Um, so the inter-service championship is going on this Saturday at King's Home. Women's kickoff is 11. The men's kickoff is quarter past three. Um, go watch it. And shout out to Vodafone, um, our sponsor. Um, and... I don't know if Vodafone knows that the woman who sport is now also next to their logo. Um, but the uh, United Kingdom fun. Armed Forces rugby shirt has a beautiful Vodafone logo on it as well. And I love that there is a sponsorship for women's rugby even when it's like this into services, celebrating people from across services coming together. It's brilliant. Yeah, no, it is. It's cool. And uh, it'll be a good game. There's a lot of like high caliber players that are going to be playing this weekend you've got are you gonna you're gonna out us are you <laughs> wait what do you mean <laughs> but you're not prepared, oh, yeah. no, not prepared to drop your scottish lot in it but sure drop oh, the english in go it. for it caris is playing from wales <laughs> yeah might be an english player playing caris <laughs> williams morris yeah. yeah amy cocaine cannot confirm or deny <laughs> <laughs> There we go. <laughs> She's back on it. <laughs> She's here. She knows things. She wants to talk about them. She wants to trot it out for us. Any, any other names you'd like to drop? No, that's about it. Okay. Mm. I'm not sure anymore. She's lost me. Colly B is not playing. <laughs> Colly B won't be Sadly, playing. Sadly, no. Okay, thank heavens. I <laughs> really worried no. there for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> you were they, they, they were going to coax you off the imagine off the bench. <laughs> um, the GB rowing thing was really impressive for me to read because you were clearly identified at a very early stage. The, what is the tall and talented 2016 national campaign that Sport England run ran? Is that what it was called? Tall and talented. They had like tall and talented, they had power to podium. Sporting Giants, I think, was the one before that. How tall would you have to be to be tall and talented? Yeah, I missed this. Would she qualify? Yeah, <laughs> Sky's 100% would. Tall and talented gal, this. Maybe I only fulfilled the tall bit, that's where I got missed. <laughs> <laughs> so you've you've won a few of these accolades in your time. Were you also not the RAF Sportsman Woman of the Year at the RAF yeah, she was. Sports <laughs> Awards? Have you just been this athlete that just wins things inadvertently all the time everywhere you no, go? No, I don't. You do? I genuinely don't win lots. Like I don't win things. Like I just go about my business. But yeah, that was quite cool. A bit of a surprise. Do you have the trophy on the mantle? No, so I actually don't have it because the awards were during the World Cup, so oh. someone picked that for me. Do you have the physical trophy? No. Who picked it up for you? They've not given it, delivered it. The postal service no. in this country is very reliable. You should try it. <laughs> yeah. It's very impressive. Very, very reliable. I've never had anything like it in my life. <laughs> it's very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost as impressive as the BBC, but yes. Um, so the podcast, how did that start? Whose idea was it first? So both Rona and, I, Rona and I separately wanted to start a podcast. We'd been thinking about it and I can't remember how it came about. We must have been walking to the gym or together at some point. We're like, oh, pal, I've been there. Uh, thinking about doing like a podcast and then Rona was like no me too and then we're like 
shall we do it together? Because like actually it'd be like more conversational. Together we probably know more people. So we're like, yeah, let, let's do it. We honestly have very limited experience in this area. So we just kind of muddle our way along. Um, Don't we all? <laughs> yeah. And our first episode we recorded on bean bags, and we were buzzing with ourselves. I actually can't remember what the episode was. I think it was just me and her spraffing away. And in her room in Loughborough, and a couple hours later, I get a phone call from her. She was like, pal, uh, I think we need to re-record. And I was like, why? We smashed it. Literally one hit wonder. And she was like, all you can hear is the fucking beans in the bean bags. <laughs> It was like, <laughs> um, so yeah, we have learned an awful lot along the way. I think Mo and Skaz were one of our first guests. We were. That yeah. podcast episode. Have I mean, you listened to it? That is some you vintage, it? That is some vintage <laughs> stuff right there. Class. <laughs> it's budget. Like, there is a lot of sound issues. But do you know what? If you just accept We were all in the it, same place though, weren't we? Yeah, we were all in the same place. place. You were IRL, like, together in a room. Yeah. Was it made entirely of glass? <laughs> Uh, Did you just ask someone what IRL is yes. short for? <laughs> Did you know? No. Yeah. Like, I just went Some along people with it. just smile and push through it. I in like to understand. Life. Yes. Will like I remember this. that for next time? No, but I like <laughs> to understand. <laughs> okay. Outside of the technical stuff, w one of my favorite bits is you actually asking Mo and Skaz when they first met. It was basically an under 19s camp. And I'd played, oh. no, trials, under-19 trials, under-20s trials. I played in the 19s the year before and kicked. And we were doing a trial. So everyone assumed that I was going to kick because we just scored a trial and Mo and I were on the same team. And she comes up to me and she was like, oh, um, like I can kick too if you want me to take one. Yeah, classic. Classic. If you want me to take it. And I was like, I was a bit like, all right, okay. Yeah, like, whatever. Humble. Yeah. <laughs> but I was like, who's this bullshit little blonde thing? <laughs> Bestie since. <laughs> it's weird how things work. <laughs> it's, the, it's the great combination. And I think that's the thing that people really enjoy is you and Rona are a combination and there's something in that balance that really works. Yeah. For anyone who's not listened to it, uh, what are the two roles? Like wh what is it that the two of you bring to the conversation usually? How do you balance each other out? If Mo's always the one who's like, I can do this. <laughs> and Skaz is like, okay, cool. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. What would you is say? There a, oh. Is there a... Is there I'd a, say you two are more similar. Yeah, we're very similar. Like, we're both... Oh, oh. Okay, do you know when you, you have a friend that if you've got a bad idea and you want reassurance for this bad idea, you go, go to, to them <laughs> and they okay it. And then you're like, Frona thinks it's okay, it's fine. <laughs> we're that person for each other. You, f you feel each other's crazy a little bit. Yes. Which, yeah. I mean... Whereas Mo would come to me with a bad idea and I'd be like, man, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah. Whereas Rona and I... But then equally, uh, she's just like my OG. Like, she's... We're just... She's like my loyal gal, you know? That's Rona. Very funny. Bounce off each other. Yeah, I'd Very say funny. so. She's like the editor, like the nerdy one. And then I'll get like the questions ready and do the digging and the research. Probably. That's... The that's digging our, and the research? Yeah, that's how Look at our, you little business relationship works little background checks on people yeah you know decent amount of instagram stalking that yeah. kind of thing one of the best bits of it is skaz's scottish accent here we've got this i need to re-listen to this because it sounds like a really good episode <laughs> <laughs> we must be doing something quite good you peaked it's, yeah we peaked it's been a few years have you sharpened up no, on that scottish all. accent nothing what can you say that sounds very scottish no. <laughs> Is that Northern? Yeah, it sounded Geordie. All the Scottish girls always just say no at me. <laughs> so that's all I've ever picked up. <laughs> say no. No. Uh, no, Scotties is different to yours. Yeah, different parts. Mm. No, I haven't. I, it's, accents are not, they're not a thing of mine. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> my well, accent is. is way too easy it, it, like it's it's it tease itself up to be parody <laughs> like you must be, get it from brent but now between brent and babawa you have different south african accents like floating in that space yes. as well which is very very different yeah it is but it's also because babawa can speak i don't know like a handful of languages um she's yeah. with you guys now she is bb oh love that yeah she first session 
non-contact <laughs> smashing smashed oh yeah everything we were like yeah yeah in the warm-up we do live full goo it's not a bit of me but i have to accept it and i don't think anyone wanted to run we do this like i call it the hunger games drill it's basically 3v3 in a box and just murder ball oh. and i think it was chance poor chancy like looked up and bb was tackling her and she got munched we were like yes bb <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> now, for anyone who doesn't know, this is South African Broba Balwalacha. Um, and I have so much respect for that girl because she is an absolute machine in how hard she works, but also the variety of things that she's constantly busy, busy with. Emily Chancellor is who you were just referring to now. Yes. You guys have quite a, you've, you've imported quite a variety yeah, we have. Of people into your space. And you're really good friends with Isabella McKenzie now. The Scozzies. Me, Jade, yeah. Bella, Caitlin, and Chance. Scottish. So the Scozzies. Yeah, with the group, the Scozzies. The girl band you never knew you needed. <laughs> what but... do you play in the girl band? Oh. What? Something just came to me. Sugar Babes. But I'm going really off topic. The Scozzies is oh, a much yeah, better the band, sugar babes. by the way. <laughs> At the crunch. <laughs> yeah. Mad. How cool. Yeah. Crazy. How good. Should have got the Scozzies, but... Yeah, I mean, sorry, I, I would have booked the Scozzies. Yeah, mm. sorry, sorry. Are you on lead vocals? <laughs> lead vocals, me. <laughs> <laughs> Matchy bass guitarist. <laughs> does, does Rona every now and again come in to play the ukulele <laughs> yeah. just as a guest artist? Is she guest? sad about that? Because she loves Rona and the Whales. She does. Okay, we don't actually sing or play music. Oh. It's just our collective <laughs> theory name. of... Yeah, because we met in oh at the world cup danny doolins and we're all having a few drinks enjoying the night and you know i'm like on after a few um, oh my god you're gonna be at harlequins that she's making best friends me and caitlin the other second row had met for all about 10 seconds and already got a handshake and i was like yeah nice she's my kind of person um yeah and then we just became what, the you got a handshake. Yeah. <laughs> handshake how old are you here, there's nothing wrong <laughs> with a handshake. <laughs> Amy Cocaine calls us her retrievers because we're literally like retriever puppies. Like, and Amy's this little staffy that like calms us down. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Scozzies, like real good addition. Got BB in. It's, it's cool. Just like different blends of rugby all marrying up. There was a section that you guys did on your podcast that I'm going to nick now. Okay. The Juicy Cues. Oh, juicy cues. Okay. Do you know what? Can you remember what they were? Oh. No. What's your greatest achievement? First cap for Scotland. Winning the World Cup. Okay. Well, that's a pretty big one. Flex. <laughs> yeah, flex. <laughs> All it's, right. It's why in my head I was like, don't say it. Don't say it. I'm going to get ripped for it. Don't say it. <laughs> um, which animal would you be? Skaz, you have actually men answered this before. Don't look. You're stealing your own answer. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. Has it changed? I don't know if I'd want to be it, but I really like them. A duck. Oh, why? I just think that, I don't know, they just look cool. You, there is something <laughs> quite duck-like. They, like. they just waddle around. There is something a Land little... Land and sea. <laughs> Land yeah. and sea. <laughs> and air. Oh my God, triple threat. Triple threat. I'm a duck. <laughs> You're a duck. <laughs> yeah, fair play. That is... <laughs> but do they fly? Just... I don't think I've seen a duck fly. <laughs> Sorry, what do you mean? It's a little fly. No, it's a little awkward in the air. Ducks fly. You ain't flying quick. Yeah. If you do. Are you winding me up? Ducks fly. I can imagine. I can't, like the little quacky white ones. Mallards. That's what I'm thinking no. of. Oh, yeah. you're thinking of a farm duck. Well, I mean, you're on well, you a you farm are duck. a farm gal. I'm thinking more mallard. Oh, oh you even know the name. Like the ones with the gre green and brown. Yeah. Oh. I quite like the ones with the oak built. <laughs> There's our noise. <laughs> <Crest. laughs> right there. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Bonner, if you were an animal. If I was an animal, oh, like a narwhal. The whale with the tusk. The, the whale with the tusk? Yeah. Why? Like I a unicorn whale. I love whales. I just think they're so cool. You're like, you don't really get bothered in the ocean, but you can swim anywhere you like. You're pretty much like the unicorn of the sea. <laughs> Very good. Scottish Very good. national animal. Exactly, but in the sea. In the sea. And you know that the killer whales in South Africa are chowing the great whites. They've literally basically eradicated the great white population. Random really? fact, no one needed to know. But they, are, fact. they are eating their livers and then they're leaving the rest of the great white in the sea. They don't even care for the rest of the fish. Crazy. No one knows why this is happening. 
<laughs> Good fun fact. <laughs> Oh, and the scariest things in South Africa still walk around on two legs, but yes. Um, <laughs> we'll go around <laughs> to the next question. Uh, if you had to switch, what position would you switch to? Okay, what position would I switch to, Skaz? <laughs> She'd switch to a 10. 100%. Or maybe like a centre. Okay. Centre would be quite oh, fun. Yeah, inside, I can actually see you. Yeah. Inside centre, you're 12. This girl loves kicking the ball. There was a... I tell you what, if that had been a 50-22, that would have literally gone viral and it did quite well by itself and it wasn't quite a 50-22. Yeah. When was that? Sari's. Pre-Christmas. Pre-Christmas. Yeah. Would have... It, the first thing Amy Cocaine said to me was, that was a 50-22. Your inbox would be flooded <laughs> with marriage proposals. <laughs> Honestly, it would have been class. <laughs> oh, I hung up my boots. <laughs> Done. Enough said. I was going to say, signed it off. This uh, last one's going to be good. Go on. Wait, what would your position be? Oh, sorry. Um, Second row. No, not in a million years. You have to say number Ten. Edge, really. T ten. Yeah. I'm oh. quite happy where I am, but boring. I've got to say boring. something else. That's boring. Come on. Well, well I'm quite happy where I am, but <laughs> I played the game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number eight. Number six. Oh, no, why? don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. Change yeah. my mind immediately. <laughs> why not six? Because they do all of the gross stuff. Yeah, fair. Whereas an eight has a bit of fun, I think. Yeah. Still a little... A little bit. Or mm. an eight. Right. Star sign. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're both Aquarius. <laughs> You're an Aquarius. Oh, my God, when's your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> the fifth. Oh, my gosh. We're... See, I knew you were a good egg. <laughs> I knew you were a good egg when I met you. Based on my star sign alone. <laughs> Don't Honestly, get her started, I swear I, to God. I, I, I got way too excited when I found out Skaz was also an Aquarius. We're a day apart. Well, not in age, but like birth. All right. <laughs> Are you the nine? Completely unnecessary yeah. information. <laughs> Sorry, this is needed for the context of the story. <laughs> And I get way too excited. I think every year I send you a birthday message because I get so excited by it. And Skaz is just like... I'm not as into the star sign stuff. Right. I don't understand how you can tell what someone's star sign is because I'm the same star sign as Skaz, as my sister, as is his, but you're quite his twin, oh, my husband and his twin. We're all Aquarians and we have nothing in common. Yeah. Emma, don't be rude. No, but I mean, personality <laughs> type wise... <laughs> I, I, you cringe and I ask rude direct questions. <laughs> I mean, that's literally our function on the show, if you had to break it down. <laughs> but that's the joy of an Aquarian, right? Exactly. Is that just something we do? Mm, must be. Yeah. Must be. So Rona's a Libra and she's an air sign as well. So like basically it's like, Lib what? Gemini, Gemini's, other, this is three air signs. And basically after World Cup, me and Rona were like, we need to get air sign tattoos. What, so, what would that be? Have you got one? <laughs> Me and Rona got an air sign tattoo. The best bit about it, we then met each other a few weeks later in Melbourne. We were walking past a shop and we were like, that shop's got the same logo as our tattoos. Where did you get your tattoo design? In Auckland. Oh, the but design. Hasn't Rona just got the arrows? Yeah, so she's just got that. Because where was she the other day? In a, some shop or something, it was like a checkout sign <laughs> yeah. or something. And she was like, videoed like a tattoo and then this, this checkout sign. I was like, huh. <laughs> and the best bit is, she's got a sunset on her arm here. And have you ever been in like a like a London cab and the light sign, <laughs> light sign. is exactly the same? <laughs> Rona loves a tattoo like that, honestly. <laughs> Life's too short. <laughs> what is your next tattoo going to be? Oh, I don't know. Have probably. you started thinking about it? No, yet? I probably won't. Are you open to input and suggestions? Yes. Yeah. Skaz is going to get the Aquarius. Well, was going to get the Aquarius symbol. If we won the league, but okay. sadly we didn't. No, you were. We shook on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm um, completely star sign blind, so yeah, like agreed. unfortunately, I'm completely lost, and I honestly I don't know if I believe any of it. And um, now that we have you here on the couch, and you are the pundit extraordinary until Collie B's all healed up. Round three, Saturday. April 15th, um, what will the Aquarian be opting for? Wales, be England at Cardiff Arms Park. Let's get a prediction out of you, Sarah Bonner. Oh, like a score prediction. Mm. Ooh. At um, Cardiff Arms Park. Team about how many? 
England. Yeah. 64. Is that too big? No, not at all. I just thought you were going to be like England by. But I, I like the specificity. Oh, yeah. 64, 12. Shush. Italy versus Ireland. Italy. Where is that game? In Italy. Parma. 34. <laughs> what does your crystal ball say? 12. <laughs> Loves a 12. Loves a 12. Loves a 12. Consistent. <laughs> Favourite backline position. Um, oh, exactly. Yeah, it's the common denominator mm -hmm. here. And then on Sunday, uh, France, Scotland. Now, this is an interesting one. Didn't you guys draw? Oh, that was an amazing game. Against Unbelievable. France. Yeah, I got a couple of turnovers that game, actually. <laughs> <laughs> she says like she scored tries. Yeah. Do you know where that game is? Van. Van? Van? That place? Van is. <laughs> Make it any clearer for me, that's for sure. <laughs> Stade de la Rabin. <laughs> You're the one who came up with a French name for our podcast in Twickenham. And now I have to say it the whole time. What was that? Le crunch avec branch. Or the only thing that I That wasn't me. I didn't come up with that, did I? Did you I? came up with that. You told producer Shira we did should I? call it Le crunch <laughs> avec branch. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to keep saying that. Like I know you what I'm saying. You threw me the bus. Did I do that? Can't You're remember. buzzing. The only French I knew before this was voulez vous coucher. Uh, what was that line from Lady Marmalade? Yeah. That, that one. one. That oui. One. <laughs> oui. <laughs> but now my new line is Le crunch avec branche. But you must roll like that. It's almost got a saffa twang to it as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, we've got some pretty big news in case uh, you haven't heard the, the title of our special show. You better show. translate it for everyone else. <laughs> Basically, you are invited to come have brunch with us. And you'll get the scares that the BBC gets with makeup. I, know, I might, might be pre-makeup. Oh, pre I was sorry. thinking about that. Pre-makeup scares. Might be shabby scares. <laughs> <laughs> Will you be wearing open-toe shoes again? Probably, yeah. <laughs> Um, so we'd like to invite you along. It's called Le Crunch Avec Brunch. There will be sausage, egg and bacon baps, bottomless tea and coffee and fizz on arrival. Here, I might go. <laughs> yeah. So good. I mean, we're just down there in, in the southwest. So come and experience pre-game build up in the most famous rugby pub in the world for the most attended women's game of all time. At the moment, 46,000 tickets sold. That's what we're hearing. Now, Nick Heath told me that he had it from a reliable source that once in that big old stadium, you hit 50. From there, I think the thing just basically sells itself out. This what is, do you mean? It literally is apparently, it's the tipping point that people who what? know. So you sell 50,000 and then 30 just They say like it's over. a tipping point. He said, literally, that's when you start the thing, just like it starts moving almost on its own because everyone brings a friend and say, yeah, we're going to the rugby. And then you just end up selling the place out. I know. That's what I heard. It's very hard to believe, but I like it. I, I'm sure he Sell said. out Twickenham. I've been saying. Why are you so worried when I say that? No, it just, it just in my logical brain, just makes zero sense to me that does. But I'm here for it. I'm behind it. So, <laughs> good, the scars and the rugby and the sugar babes. Oh, the sugar babes. And Do you know what I'm sad about? Sorry to butt in. Because I'm going to be doing the TV stuff, we're going to be chatting at halftime. And it's not going to say a thing. And I'm going to be Fionn lewis my heart out. <sighs> yeah, I'm sad. It's going to be so good. So the good, the scars, and the rugby, and the sugar babes, and the fizz on arrival. Uh, match made in heaven, and you are invited. Tickets on sale tomorrow. Keep an eye on our socials uh, for the details. And come on down. Do, do you want to come hang? Are you... Also, might be playing. Oh, of yeah. course. But if not, me and Ron will be there just next door of Women Who Sport. <laughs> <laughs> With a little guerrilla marketing. Very <laughs> She's going to call Stu from the Cabbage Patch and go, yeah. Stu, so can I have the room next door, please? <laughs> Thank you very much. I am a Harlequins player. <laughs> Remain loyal. <laughs> Remember who your real friends are, Stu. Yeah. Uh, she's going to be handing out some of her prized business cards with QR codes on them to get more girls into playing for Scotland. Pronto. Yeah. Love that. Posh. An agent using her powers for good. Here's to many more beautiful podcasts. Thank you. And you too. 
<laughs> Here's to recovering ahead of schedule and seeing you back in that beautiful shirt, which honestly is actually, I'm not going to say the most beautiful shirt in the spon in the championship because then Scars is going to kick off, but honestly one of my favourite ones. it is, let's be honest. It is a... I think if Scars could play in blue, she would. It's a class jersey. She's obsessed with wearing all white. We didn't talk about that. I need to ask you, playing in white shorts. The Welsh girls and the English girls have voted on this. No one knows whether the Irish girls actually had a say. Are you team white sh shorts or not? Rowan and I spoke about this this morning, actually. I'm team white short just because I think it looks quite good. Um, but I fully understand the reasons and the justification behind a move. But yeah, with blue and then blue short, I had to do that the other day with some mismatch kit for the Air Force and it looked awful. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, we can never do this. Um, but yeah, I, I quite like a white short. Traditionalists, there we have it. Uh, let women have a say over what they wear, wherever possible. Uh, we have been the good, the scars and the rugby in partnership with Vodafone. This is a Folding Pocket production produced by Shara Kilgallen. We'll see you again next time.